all right, at the top right is the brown Protoss. We have a liquid drone. Then in the bottom right, we do have Tots Nelgrim, or Nelgrim. And this is another cool map like Judgment Day, which has a really weird choke at the front. The Overlord's just passing it now. Uh, the natural yeah. on this map is insanely small. Mm -hmm. I'll be interested to see how Drone actually walls this off. I guess you just wall at the very front, right? Yes. Uh, hold on. Let me. Let me see. Yeah. So yeah, you, you can you can kind of wall it off at the front, I guess. I'm I'm not 100% sure if things are tight against uh, that little the jaggedy wall. Um. But yeah, you're right. It's it's not that much building space. Like even the main. Okay, it comes down a little bit, but I don't know. The the main feels a little bit small to me as well. Uh, so I would be, you know, you're gonna have to keep an eye on your, uh, on your building placement, I suppose. One other thing, I saw a game on this map once where the little ridge outside the bottom of uh, Drone's main over to the top of Nogrim's main, uh, there was a lot of shuttles and everything going through there, so the Zerg player actually had to leave some Hydras there to just defend mm -hmm. until he got Scourge, which was kind of crazy. This map has such a weird open middle as well, because you have the... You have the ridges again that lead some unbuildable terrain in the exact center of the map, but the it's just such a strange map to look at. By the way, was the game time always on top of the mini map? No, they've added that in the last patch, I think. Nice. Although it means it doesn't appear on my stream because it's behind the map overlay, <laughs> I believe. But that's cool. Unlucky. Finally, wait. Apparently, I'm not even showing the map overlay now. I am. Oh, there we go. I might just move that up. Oh man, this is actually so cool. I can multi-select the drone and the probe to see who's dying faster. Guys, this technology is insane. Yeah, we're in the future now, that's it. Rude Rory Mastered is like... I didn't know that was the middle ground. That was the 90s, we've now just hit like 2001. <laughs> oh man. Good times, good times. Alright, looks like uh, Drone scouts out the gateway expand, and Nogram gonna make some links to counter this. It's gonna be quite interesting. I mean, both these guys, you know, big name, old school players. Uh, very interesting to see them play the newer styles, you know, gateway expand, that kind of thing. Okay, Lancer X just came back, but <laughs> too bad. He waited way too long. I don't know... I don't know where he went, but he's gonna see the bracket now and be like, why have I been DQ'd? And it's like, well... He kind of disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he really was playing on two accounts. Like we were making a joke about it before, but genuinely he was on another computer playing a clan war or something. <laughs> he actually is just in an internet cafe right now, and he just logged in on one PC and then sat on the PC next to it, to play a different game. All right, looks like uh, Frizzella not going to get too much done here against the uh, against the eight Zerglings that have already been been made by Nogrim. Nogrim, by the way, taking the bottom left natural as his third base. Seems pretty reasonable. Um, the close third would be this kind of inside 3 o'clock, which is expanding towards the Protoss, which is not that good. And the 6 o'clock, I believe, is an island. Yep, 6 o'clock is most certainly an island, and it's got a very weird... I mean, it's got that cliff in front, which is quite nice. Quite nice for her ass. Yep. And looks like we got the wall in here. Now, uh, gateway expands are usually best on maps where you can make a tight or almost tight wall with uh, like the pylon forge gateway. But oh man, look at this! Two cells getting immediately picked off. But this wall, I feel, is a little bit. Uh, it's got, a, got quite a few gaps and makes me a little bit scared now for drone. Like, how's he gonna deal with the counterattack? Looks like he's just gonna try and distract. But you can see Nalgrim only leaving four Zel uh, zerglings to deal with it, sending all the rest immediately to counterattack. Yeah, he's gonna actually have some trouble now. He's gonna try and build some cannons behind, but I think the Zergling should get there before, and I'm fairly certain on the right that can't be tight, surely. Oh, it's uh, not even tight between the gateway and the forge either, so... No. I mean, luckily enough for Drone, it looks like Norgrim doesn't want to press in, and not wanting to give up too many lings. Uh, back in his base, he is still on two hatcheries, has his third hatchery now just producing drones, so we're not going to see any, well at least for the time being, we're not going to see any sort of crazy ling all in. Uh, we do see he did get speed for his lings as well, so he's going to have that map presence that he can use to help deal with the gateway expand uh, if he does send any extra zealots over. 
the yeah, Gurn is so... most likely going to have to play on the defensive for a bit. So it seems that uh, that Nogrim is actually going for four hatch before lair, possibly five hatch before lair, while my cat just freaks out and falls off my desk. Uh, <laughs> looks like meanwhile on the Protoss side, the core has only just started, so the tank is not particularly fast from drone either, uh, and this this could be quite effective from Nogrim, especially taking the bottom left side means he's probably going to play a bit more defensively, turtle up a bit, and take that bottom left main for free, and play a very uh, macro style here, so we could be in for a, a nice long PvZ. Yeah, he's adding on his 4th hatchery at the front, likely going to see a 5th hatchery probably to help wall off his 3rd uh, base. We do see the drone going up there now to do that, it looks like. Yeah, we do see that 5th hatchery going down, heading into the mid game with a nice, uh, healthy amount of production uh, for the Zerg player. He's now resumed mining gas as well, so I can only assume in about 10 gas we'll see the lair coming up, unless it's 150. Either way, he'll likely go into his lair pretty quickly from here. He's already got Pyjolus then coming up. Mm -hmm. It looked like he sent some uh, drones to possibly... I'm not sure if that was a rally or if he was going to build some creep colonies, but he does have that map control, knowing the drone is stuck back in his base at the moment. He also has the Overlord as well, scaling out these three gateways in the Citadel. So that's a really nice uh, spot for him. Yeah, he just spent his gas somewhere, but it's actually not for the lair, so I guess he got a Hydra upgrade uh, instead. Going for 6 hatch Hydra, no lair, taking the 4th base, that's actually a, a very nice macro, kind of greedy build, but it's quite safe as long as you SimCity properly. And uh, you know, the, the natural choke here, even though it's kind of awkward for Protoss the wall, it's relatively narrow compared to some other maps, so it's quite easy to make a nice uh, SimCity here for the Zerg player and should be really nice. now. Not, uh, sorry, Drone rather, uh, skipping the Stargate will have a pretty nice early force to try and do something, but I mean, it's going to be mainly Zealots, and again, with the SimCity, as long as Nogrim plays it properly, I think he'll be fine. Yeah, Nogrim, uh, you can already see he's started a SimCity on both bases, using the hatchery and the extra building. I think the Evolution Chamber is only slightly bigger than the um, Hydra this den, but that does make a Pretty nice wall. I don't think it's Zealot type, but um, he's going to be able to put up a decent amount of Sunkens there. Yeah. It's going to be very difficult for Drone to actually get into that other main as well. Really strong, powerful play on this map. You know, it just occurred to me actually, this is the strategy that Drone used against um, uh, Eonzerg in the ESL tournament earlier today, I believe, on Jade. Uh, he did the exact same thing, skipping Stargate, going for fast four gateways. And one cool thing he did actually was, since he has no Stargate with Corsairs, he actually made a Dark Archon with Maelstrom to help deal with any Muta follow-up from the Zerg. So it'd be quite funny. It would be quite fun to see if uh, that happens again uh, in this game. We do see the lair finished up for Norgren, uh, adding on a lot of Hydralisks to be expected. Actually, adding on a lot of Sunkens over on his second natural as well, knowing that the Zealots on the front are going to be a problem now they have speed. Uh, he needs to be very careful. He doesn't have too many links to defend. He has the Hydras at his natural choke, but he needs uh, probably needs some sunken there as well. Looks like he's got two hidden behind the Overlord there. But map control does now swing in favor of the Protoss player. Yeah, but there's nothing you can do with this. I mean, there's even links checking the uh, the inside third here. There's actually a link at the top left where there is a probe that where Drone was potentially trying to do something sneaky. But uh, this is, I think, this is a great position for Nogrim, although I did say that kind of the same thing for Eonzerg in his game against Drone, and uh, he did actually end up losing that game after a pretty long, intense battle, so I guess we shall see here how this plays out. The one out benefit results. for Nogrim on this map is outside of the natural choke, and in the middle of the map it's extremely open, so these early storms, while they're going to be powerful against the Hydra, there's a lot of room to maneuver around them, so He's not going to have such an easy time as something as even as uh, choked up as Fighting Spirit, and that's quite a wide map. There is just so much open space to dodge the storms here. Yep. Um, definitely. But I, I think that matters more in like the early engagements. Once you kind of, you know, have uh, four control groups of Hydralisks, it's pretty difficult to dodge. Even if you, if you, even if you, you know, have good micro, they just kind of all clump together and run into each other. Uh, so could still be good for Nogrim, or sorry, for oh, Drone, I think rather. He's, it looks like he's actually walled in his Hydralisks in his third base. They're having to run through the minerals and get a bit confused. <laughs> that could be a problem a little bit later game when he's trying to get his reinforcements out. He's just pulling the Jadong special, you know, no big deal. 
Yeah, he'll uh, suddenly win about 10 minutes later when he realizes he's suddenly got a 200 200 army somehow. But when he's been running around like a few lings on the map, like, huh, where's all my units? Dude, the best thing yeah, about that game was Jaynom was actually winning, even though half of his army was stuck. Yeah. Oh, Hydra, the uh, Hydra snipes! Oh, got one. Oh, a nice storm goes down, but it only hits three of the Hydra lists, and they don't hit too much damage there. He's Maybe. got a really nice position on this high, high ground, but this other High Templar is going to go down, it looks like, and it does. So Drone's going to have to fall back. He's lost all of his tech units. It doesn't actually look like he's got any other Templar at the moment. I'm trying to take this uh, 2 o'clock third base as a third as well down the ramp. Yeah. But they see a big engagement here, though. Oh man, he's fighting. The Hydras are on the middle ridge here on the high ground. There's so many Zealots. Look at this insanely strong army. It's only Zealot Dragoon, as you said, no High Templar, but it doesn't matter. He's got overwhelming weight of numbers. But meanwhile, a counterattack at the potential third base of Drone. Nogrim gonna deny this, gonna take down the cannon, gonna force the cancel on the pylon. So no expansion for Drone. And that's a problem moving well, forward the here. Are finally here. There's, there's no actual, um, there's no observers or any form of detection over here. No storm means he's gonna have to run away from these letters that are on the ridge. Yeah, for sure. By the way, yeah, I think one reason careful. why he's behind on Templars is he got his second gas at his natural super late. He built his second assimilator at 40 supply. No for normal PvZ builds, you get that at something like 20 to 25, depending on the opening. I think. Uh, basically, after your cybernetics core, I think, uh, pretty, you want to get that pretty soon after that. Whereas, no, uh, Drone delayed it by quite a bit. Now, he is going to surround this oh. small group of Hydras, though. Can he get the snipe? So, there's only two Templar there. One goes down. Both go down as well, only losing two Hydralists in that engagement. Probably going to be able to get away with the rest of them as well. Yeah. Really nice trade there for him. Oh, man. Really, really uh, unfortunate there for Nogrim. Not having enough units... Uh, to actually protect those High Templars, and this is just gonna go down the hill for him. Look at the supply counts, even supply, that should not happen in PvZ. You know, Protoss needs to be ahead here, and he's been down the base, uh, well down two bases technically, but down a base where he should be, really needs to keep up, at least uh, just being one base behind the Zerg is fine in PvZ. And he's controlling he's the map for now, but... Observatory as well. So yeah. he's finally going to be able to do some of the lurkers, but as you can see on the minimap, Norgrim has got that overlord on the on the base over the right, and he's sending a lot of links there to counter once again. The lurkers are going to get in both sides here. This could be very bad for Drone if he's not careful. Oh man, looks like the Hydras and Lurkas also have the high ground against the Dragoons. He needs to not fight from this little narrow valley point. He's retreating back up onto the high ground, and this is a much better position if he wants to re-engage here. I think he can re-engage. The Hydras are running up the ramp. The Lurkas are a little bit far back, but without the High Templars, the Protoss army is really not very scary. Now, it looks like he was able to save the third base here, but uh, but maybe not for much longer because Nogrim is just pushing Drone into the corner here. Nogrim gonna tear apart these Dragoons pretty quickly, yeah, I think. Also, he's trapping himself in this little weird ridge that's sitting above both their bases as well. So these Dragoons are actually gonna die. I don't think they're gonna get away. And that's gonna be a huge loss. It looks like Drone is actually gonna try and reinforce up this ramp. But the Lurkers are gonna get on top of the ramp there, and he's just gonna suicide units if he tries to make it up there. He's finally got another two High Templar there, but not adding on any more either. He's having trouble really fording them at the moment, I think. Yeah, sending a couple of units to try and clear the top left to maybe get that, but that base is so far away by ground to the Protoss army, I think he might want to just make a shuttle maybe and try and take the 12 o'clock uh, 12 o'clock island since since Nogrim is so focused on Hydra, Hydra Lurker. You know, get, get that island going, put a couple of cannons there to make it safe against drops or, or mutas, and, uh, and try and just make a comeback that way because he's really losing control of the ground war here. Drone Almost 20 supply behind Nogrim, and now Nogrim moving into the natural. He's gonna grab another High Templar maybe for free? Not quite. I think we may actually see a Doom drop coming out of Nogrim at some point soon. He does have speed overlords, and he was sending them all up to the top left, only opting to really move them back once he uh, he realized he pushed him with his army anyway. A big move in. There's just no. There is two observers here. There's no. Uh, there's no overlord to actually spot this. Oh, and some of the Lurkers are way too fucked up. Two Lurkers go down to two Storms, another one may drop. There's only 15 health on it, and Norgram actually losing most of his forces here. Yeah, but look at the reinforcements pouring in on the minimap. Looks like mostly Zergling is gonna go for- some gonna go for the army, some gonna go for the third base. There are three cannons here, but the Lings 
Might be able to take them all down here. There's no other units, no High Templar to support the cannons, and the cannons going down very, very quickly. It looks like Adrenal Glance has actually already been upgraded for an Augur. I haven't actually checked the Zerg base in a while, but those look like he does have Adrenal a yeah. Zerglings to me. He's also got his Defiler Mound. Oh, he's going to get both the Observers as well. Wow, and the Cracklings are on the Nexus. Look at those Cracklings go. There's one Lurker helping them out as well. The Nexus is at 149. There's no Alps here, but the Lurker's not attacking the Nexus. And there's the Alps. Oh, yeah, the Alps just got there in time. Oh, that poor Lurker egg. Wow, just having a look. So many hatcheries for Nogrim. He's got his Hive. He's getting a, another base at the left side. And... Drone just unable to even get his third base, whereas Nogrim's gonna get his fifth. Oh, and Nogrim's making really good use of this little this little area here. He's trapping the dragoons and zealots in this corner again. One uh, one lurker does go down, but he's gonna lose all of these units. And a lurker's actually moving in. There's three lurkers attacking this uh, this nexus now. Some zealots are gonna try and move in to try and deal with this, but it's just not gonna be enough. The probes are like hell. Oh, the nexus falls. And more units rolling in. GG from Drone and Nogrim takes game number one here in the quarterfinals. All right, ladies and gentlemen, going into game number two on Blue Storm. Not even Blue Storm. It's the Blue Storm. Supposedly, this is the uh, this is the street version. <laughs> Hey, all right, at the bottom left as the White Zerg, we have TOT's Nogrim. And in the top right, we do have a Liquid's Drone. In the orange again. Dude, this this tournament's rigged. What are you doing, Kicks? What's up with these colors, man? Come on. I'm just rigging it, that's it. At least, you, at least white and orange is kind of uh, easy to see the difference between. Yeah, and we're on a blue tile set, so uh, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, so this is Drone's choice. ZVP on Blue Storm. I mean, it doesn't strike me as a particularly Zerg map, but I'm not really sure. I wouldn't say it's uh, Drone's choice. It was just the next in the map pool. Oh, of course. Never mind. Also, yeah, I got confused did, there because it. Drone is Protoss, not Zerg. <laughs> Whoops, failed <Yeah>. there. <laughs> It, it's his name. Like he offers his PVC, I guess. But like, yeah. he needs to he needs to think of the poor casters with that name of his. Maybe he needs a separate account when he's gonna play ZVZ Liquid Probe. Dude, you can just be Liquid Worker. That would work. Then he's set for all three matchups. There we go. Mm -hmm. so you gotta think just outside the box. Problem. Okay, we do see a nine pool come out of Norgrim here. Oh, uh, Overfall actually, the Overlord just spawned. Yep, pretty standard ZVP build. Uh, interested to see what Drone's wall looks like on this map. Dragon had a spectacular wall. Maybe Drone can show us something awesome for the top right. He's put the Forge and Pylon in an interesting position there. Yeah, that's so really far forward. The beginning of, a, beginning of a good wall, I imagine. I wonder if he's going to try and fit his core as part of the wall in the top right and then the gateway in the middle. Possibly? This is I mean, a pretty out there for. I guess we'll see. Oh, Unless the he's probe. going for a cannon rush. The probe! The probe is dead! No rush possible, the probe is dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's sending another probe. What is he sending this to? That is, uh. Looks like just going to be making cannons, maybe? Or is he going to try and make the Nexus first? That's slightly brave, because I believe there are six Zerglings making. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to be safe and make the cannon. Even with one cannon here, if there are actually six links, I would be a little bit scared. So four links come out first. It could be four links and a drone. I think that's pro pro possibly a little bit more common. Yeah, okay, so there, it is a drone follow-up. So just the four links, in which case the one cannon should be fine here. Uh, and then he's going to make the Nexus, of course. And he did force... Nogrim to take the close mineral only third, whereas some Zergs would prefer, I think, to take the top left one with the gas. Yeah. Mineral only doesn't really benefit Zerg too much in PvZ early on. Uh, Lings, once there's a wall off, aren't really going to be able to do too much. And especially with early plus one Zealots as well, he's going to have trouble with just the minerals. He does get his third hatchery up pretty quickly, though. 
and the added minerals from the mineral only should allow him to get a few more drones and also the top left a little bit quicker. I'm very interested to see what uh, drone does on this map because uh, Nogrim is going to be forced into a much more aggressive style, I think, compared to last game. Like, you obviously can't just turtle up on uh, four bases and, and outmacker your opponent, uh, especially taking this uh, this mineral only. So Nogrim probably going to play a bit more aggressive. And also, since this is more open and you can't just SimCity everything, maybe drones, you know, no Stargate, uh, four gate style will be more successful, but. I'm, not, I'm still not really convinced by that build. That feels more of like a, a two base all in ish kind of thing, and every single time he just gets thwarted by, by SimCity. It was the exact same situation against Eon Zerg. Yeah, and it also feels like when you don't go for that Stargate, you're so vulnerable to Mutalisks that it's just. It's going to be impossible to get a third later on if they go for fire. Yeah. And, well, it's like. Uh... I'm gonna run away from those things, get back home. It looks like actually Nogrim doing something kind of similar to last game. Again, going for the fourth hatch, presumably fifth hatch before Lair here. I think last game he got Zergling speed, right? This time he didn't even mine the gas for speed yet. Yeah, he's not buying gas at all, so he's just going straight up to the uh, straight up to the additional hatcheries. He's finally put guys on, or at least one guy on gas, so it's gonna be a while before he can actually get anything. He does have some idle drones though. I don't know if he's noticed this, he's not really microing anything around. But in his main, there are two drones, he's now just sent them to mine. Uh, so maybe... Not sure why they were idle, but I guess he just got a little bit distracted by something. He was trying to get the Zergling into the... Uh, past that Zealot, but that wasn't going to work. Another probe does actually manage to get out though, so the probe's going to be able to go and scout this extra hatchery. Do we see a fifth hatchery anywhere? Doesn't appear so at the moment. Yes, we no. That's an evolution chamber. So evolution chamber going up at uh, Norgrim's third. Man, drone making an early dragoon to take down this overlord. But the overlord's already seen everything he needs to. It sees the early second gateway. Sees the citadel. No stargate. Drone going for the same style here. And again, I'm not 100 percent conv 100 convinced by this. But if it's going to work on any map, it's going to be a map like Blue Storm, where you really can't just sim city and turtle. Um, so we'll yeah, it's going to be very but... hard to actually defend that ramp, uh, especially because he'll have the high ground as well when he's pushing down. Yeah. This third base is going to be very, very hard to sim city in. There's just no room to build any buildings either to make a wall. Yeah, he has he has tried with a second hatchery there uh, and getting a lair at the same time. I mean, he's just going to have to use more hydralisks basically, so he can't be quite as greedy as last game where he droned up a lot before getting the hydralisks. And yeah, and we do see that second gateway along with the Templar Archives going up in Drone's base. Uh, not, yeah, that is Drone and his third gateway as well. So, as you said, he is going for the exact same build. Is Norgrim going to actually change his build here and maybe go for Mutalis, knowing that Drone won't be going for Corsairs? We'll see as soon as this lair finishes. That could be a good move, although it would take a little while to come out. You know, I was just thinking, this this build from drone feels like you know the old uh four gateway uh two archon you know mass speed lot timing attack in pvz that like you yeah know, people used to use all the time it feels like that but the thing is that the problem is that build was solved that built like against the competent zerg you can't win anymore uh because the zerg have the timing figured out they have the sim city figured out on the modern maps so i'm okay maybe can't win anymore is a bit unfair but you know it's it's not nearly as effective as it was back in the day yeah, it's one of those things that is sort of flash in the pan, that sometimes you may catch someone off guard with it. But as Norgrim has played the game for so long, he should know uh, know that build by just what he sees. He's actually got Sunkins coming up at uh, his natural and his third now, just to be safe. Uh, opting for that Hydralist there, no spy yet, so it looks like he's just going to try and do what he did last game. And just outpower his way through this build that Drone is doing. Drone made a Dark Archon in his main super early. <laughs> I imagine he must be going for Maelstrom then. Yep, it's gotta be Maelstrom. I mean, he did this against Eon Zerg. It's it's kind of cute if the Zerg goes Mutas, but I don't think Nogram's actually going Mutas here. I mean, maybe maybe you know what? Maybe he's trying to bait Nogram into going Mutas because he scouted no uh, Stargate. So he's like, oh, you know, maybe Nogram's gonna be like, well, I guess I'll make Mutas, kind of like you suggested earlier, and Drone's gonna be like, ha. I have my Maelstrom and just kill them all and just counterattack or something. I don't know. 
I think Drone is trying to think way too far ahead. He's thinking like four steps ahead of himself, just trying to be trying to be sensible. Like he didn't even try and do any damage with the Dark Templar that he built either. He just morphed it straight into an Archon. Mm -hmm. So not the best choice of use for the money either. Unless oh. this goes super late game and he gets the hatchery. Wait, wait. I, I actually I figured it out. Nog or er, Drone really likes the Dark Archon portrait like I do, but since it's 50,000 points, he's like, well, since I can't actually get the portrait from my profile, I'll just build a Dark Archon and just look at how cool it looks in the game. And that's that's close enough, right? If I just make a Dark Archon every game, it's the same as if I had it as my portrait. Yeah, he'll yeah. just leave it as like his main hotkey, so every time he's macroing, he just switches back to like one or something, and there'll just be a Dark Archon portrait on his screen. He's like, yeah, this is what I play this game for. We do see Norgrim actually making a lot of lings. Uh, he's gonna go. Oh, he's actually got lurkers as well. So the lurkers gonna move up. It's actually gonna be very hard for Drone to actually push out of his base without any observatory. He has his robo now. It looks like he's just adding the observatory on now. But this high ground is gonna be very hard to push up. Stop he needs storm. Oh! oh no! Oh, and he gets both the Templar again as well. Oh my oh, god, the stop lurkers take down two these. Templars. My cat is even excited about this. Like, holy moly, the plays! And... This poor Dark Archon, <laughs> unable to do anything against the lurkers and the lings. Just gonna, just gonna sort of hang out there in the middle of the army, try and get a little bit beefy. Oh, that's, that's actually <laughs> kind of clever, building the two pylons next to each other and then the two uh, cannons. And he couldn't move down yet. I'm not sure why he's moving so far down. That Dragoon may die, he needs to pull it back. He just really wants oh, to protect these cannons and make sure they finish. But the thing is, this AWP should be coming out in just a second as well. And the AWPs will probably get here before the cannons finish anyway. So, it's not the end of the world. Oh man, oh, I oh, the cannons aren't even gonna finish. Meanwhile, Zerg is getting the 6 o'clock. Getting his hive. Getting all that good old macro going. Ooh, big storm on the Zerg thing. Looks like he tried to go for the. Uh, Go for the Dark Archon, but as soon as the OBS comes out, this should be clean. Yeah, there's the OBS. Okay, so you can clean this up pretty easily. There's no more supporting units. And there we go. The crazy thing is, uh, Drone of Nogrim this time has actually built Scourge. Uh, to most likely try and snipe the OBS as it comes out. He does have the Overlord with speed up the front. And if he can snipe this, uh, this Observer with his Scourge, he's going to be in such an incredible position. And moving into the late game, taking the 6 o'clock base is such a good move, as that is on Protoss' side of the map if this was to flip. Oh, the Overlord does go down though, he doesn't manage to save that, so he may not be able to actually see the Observer anymore. Oh man, he's got a sandwich coming in, he's got Lings in the flank, he's going for the surround! Ah, the Lings are coming in, Maelstrom, where's the Maelstrom at? The first storm is a dud, the second storm is pretty good, but look at how many Lings are a big double Maelstrom on the Zerglings! Holy moly! Doubles Maelstrom, double Storm, kills a lot of the Lings, but it's not it's enough. It's not the, enough. Oh god, the Protoss gets massacred. Wow, nice surround there by Nogrim. The sick, 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 sick. The Dark Archon does manage to get away. Now the interesting thing is here, Drone is actually, oh, Nogrim's actually pushing in with no, uh, no Overlords as well. So a DT switch here could actually save him. He needs to be careful with those observers, so if an overlord does come over, there is one coming over now. Both those observers are going to go down to the Scourge. Oh man, perfectly positioned too. That's that's pretty fortunate there for Nogrim, or maybe he saw the shadow and did it on purpose. But one lurker now just wailing away on this Nexus. I don't think those cannons are going to be in range, even if they finish. Is that in... Is that an observer range, though, of the cannon? It doesn't look like it is, because he just run that zealot away. Oh, these cannons... <laughs> <laughs> They're all in front of the Nexus, they can't do anything, and that probe takes all of its shield as soon as it comes out of the uh, Nexus there. A huge swarm of reinforcements coming across the middle of the map of Ling and Hydra, and another load of lurkers just waiting to go in for that kill move. Oh, He's God. also taking the 10 o'clock base as well, so... Norgrim's put himself in an unbelievable position this game, showing why he won last week as well. Oh yeah, that's right! I forgot, he is the defending champion. Uh, Nogrim taking down his old ally, his old teammate here, Liquid Drone. And I mean, I guess technically the game isn't over quite yet. I mean, you know, the Pearls is still like 20 supply ahead, but just looking at the minimap, I mean, you can see another base going up for Nogrim at the top left. 
Drone is struggling just for the Minnow only and is getting a little bit low in his main base as well. So Nogram has a pretty sweet time. Oh, also all the Hive Tech is done as well. The Filers are out on the field. With the Filers, the units the Drone has just aren't going to be able to handle it. He has a lot of Dragoons, which, while he can range down the Lurkers, as long as he doesn't... Oh my god, the Observer's going straight into the Hydralist and Overlord! <laughs> he wait, wait. back just in time. Kix, you forgot one critical unit, though. The Dark Archon can feed back Defilers and one-shot them. See, guys, when you go late-game PvZ, I have been a huge advocate of getting at least one or two Dark Archons in like a maxed-out late-game PvZ army. Because with Consume, Defilers pretty much are always maxed energy whenever oh, they walk he's going in. in. Yes! Oh, he gets it! Yes! This is what I mean. Guys, Feedback has 13 range. I think Feedback has almost the same range as a Siege Tank. So you are pretty much guaranteed to cast Feedback before the Zerg casts the spell oh, on you like a play. He's trying to find it. Oh no, he's going to lose the Dark Archon. And he needs to split it back. Oh no, but the Lings are moving in. Where's the storm? Where's the psionic storm? There's a psionic storm. There's another one. He's dodging actually by he the holds. Zerglings as best that they can. Another Archon coming up. That Archon on eight kills. Uh, the Lurkers trying to move in. There is an Observer here somehow. Uh, oh, it's just behind the cannons. Oh, that Lurker's doing so much damage that I definitely need to run away. Oh. Archon oh. finishes morphing. He got 2-1 by the way, pretty good upgrade, although 2-1 uh, for the Zerg as well. There's actually a shuttle here, I don't know if that has Reavers or what's actually in the shuttle, but it's coming along for the ride here, why not? Oh, that, that Lurker popped out in the middle of like 10 fellas. Unfortunate for that guy. Oh, and he saves the shuttle as well, the shuttle nearly died. A 2 Scourge, but the Archon does take that down. This is such an insane battle in the middle, it looks like drones come out ahead somehow. Some good control. Feedback. And I pressed the wrong button. Oh, oh. Uh, feedback in that wouldn't be useful. <laughs> it's on 29, 29 uh, energy there. It, it actually casted a plague and it only hit one zealot. That's the value plague. Mm -hmm. Alright, looks like we're moving in once again. Looks like, uh, I think I heard a high Templar slap. Yeah, he's going after a second high Templar here. Causing, forcing the storms to be used. But actually, Drone, look at this, he's at 50 supply lead. I thought he was in serious trouble, but Drone actually making it work with this powerful Protoss army here. I think he does actually have a Reaver in the shuttle because he had the he has a support bay, although I haven't seen it drop yet, interestingly enough. And Drone could make it happen. I think he sees the 6 o'clock. Yeah, Ooh, he sees the 6 yeah, o'clock. He's, he's going for it. it. There's just no defense here. There's only one sunken colony, but there is an Idus Canal. Is he going to be able to ferry enough units through quick enough before these Zealots go on top of it? But a huge storm goes down, and a nice swarm as well, but that's just Zella and Archon under there, so that's not going to help the Zerglings at all. Can he get the drones out the Nidus in time? No, he can't. He's going to lose absolutely everything in this bottom, bottom of the map here. What the hell? Drone! Looks like he might actually be winning this game. I'm pretty sure the shuttle now is empty. He, I, I thought there would be a Reaver in it, but it seems he, he didn't actually wait for the Reaver before maybe hotkeying the, uh, the Reaver with his army. He's now going to lose another High Templar, but he's killed the 6 o'clock base, killed all of the drones that were here. He's now got a 65 supply lead. I don't know how Drone has pulled this one out. I mean, Although this... there is a big Lurker counterattack going towards the third. There is a Reaver there, though. But it won't have vision of the high ground. There is oh, there is an observer there, so he should be in a good position. But that Reaver's just going to be able to kill all of these lurkers. Oh god, he's killing the lurkers. The reavers, the quick reavers from Joan. I really love the style from from him actually. Always going for the uh, for the fast reavers. But it looks like one of the reavers is going to get sniped. One of the reavers is going to get focused down by the hydros. They're not going to be able to get the second reaver. He's got to be careful also not to run the zealots in. The main the Protoss army is actually just chilling at the 6 o'clock, is actually going to take that as an expansion, which is quite interesting because, oh, the Reaver, it's quite interesting because the 6 o'clock is actually easier to defend than the bottom right, even though technically it's closer to the Zerg base, it's a it's a single entry point, narrow choke, and especially with Reavers, it's going to be very easy to defend that. Yeah, one thing that I've noticed as well is Drone's actually gone up to two shuttles, and one interesting thing he could actually do is elevator into the main if he so chose to, <laughs> but he will need to clear these units here. Can he get feedback on that Defiler? Where is the Dark Archon? It's all the way over there, so this Dark Archon's gonna move in. Uh, this Defiler even, it does get a Plague on a good number of Zealots. Ooh. Oh, a nice Plague on both Shuttles and the Reavers as well. 
Nice. Oh, the play. Reavers are so powerful against Lurkers, and the Reaver gets the Defiler as well. <laughs> oh, Juggling. Ah, Juggling. He's going to go in for a plate, but there's just nothing worth plaking. He actually played the same units again. Oh my god, those links almost kill the second Reaver, but it does escape to the shuttle just oh. in time. Middle of the map, we do see a drop loading up four overlords worth of Lurker Ling with a Defiler as well. Gonna flow over in a very weird. Like, I'm surprised he's actually going this route. He should have loaded up closer to the main, uh, but luckily enough for him, uh, Drone didn't actually opt to move fully up. That could have been very bad. But he's gonna move straight into the main. There's absolutely no defense here whatsoever, and actually, Uddle probes because he can't take a fourth base yet. Uh, yeah. Drone's actually mined out right now. The oh only God. base he has mining is kind of low, uh, that mineral only. Oh, and he's gonna get these High Templars as well as they try and leave the base. Oh man, big Doom Drop yeah. coming in for Nogrim. Drone unfortunately unable to keep the 6 o'clock and now potentially gonna lose all of his production here in the main. What units does he have? He's got some units coming back. I mean, he's got so many problems now. He needs a base, he needs to clear out his main. You know, his army is not the biggest, so even though it's pretty good defensively with the Reavers and Storms, it's so, like, the army on the map has got to be very, very careful where it moves. Look at this, the Cracklings tearing apart everything. There's a couple of units here, a Reaver's coming back. He didn't have shuttle speed, so it takes a while for the Reaver to come back, and finally coming back, but there's no OBS here either. He needs an Observer to be able to deal with these Lurkers. Meanwhile, though, Crackling's the rest of the first army is going so for the counterattack. Quickly. Oh, he, does he have an Observer there, though? I don't think he, he does, but it's behind his army. Another... Oh, is he gonna get the... No, he doesn't get the um, feedback there quick enough. And those Lurkers actually not bothering to go under the Swarm, knowing it's not really gonna help. Oh, that Reaver got a huge shot. He picks it back up as well. That Reaver's actually on 26 kills. Wow, he's moving up. He's trying to move into the Swarm. He's trying to get some feedback. Oh! No. Yes, he one, gets the feedback! One, two, three! But only one of them actually died, because he'd only consumed with the one. Uh, and at least it's stopped him from having an AJ. He's actually going in now. The Reaver, though, is a little bit far back. This could be the last hurrah, though, for Drone. Drone, though, losing his army. He's losing so many units. He's kind of killing some stuff, but it's not enough. He's lost his Reaver as well. It's going to be a very even army trade, but given that Drone has no mining, look at how clo the supply difference has closed. Oh, man. Oh, and this poor Dark Archon needs to run away. He can't lose this before the end of the game. It just, no! Ah, oh, GG's called. The Dark Archon doesn't die though. It died right at the end. The Dark Archon death animation is pretty cool. I think it might be the same as the normal Archon though. Either way, crazy game there by Drone and Norgrim. I can't believe Drone nearly come back in that.